Hi folks, and welcome back to the greenhouse today. I wanted to talk a little bit about when is the right time to bring out your plants? I get a few questions about this, and it's one of the things about garden questions is that every question almost is, how long is a piece of string? Um, it's one of the things that frustrated me the most when I started gardening. You know, you want a simple question for like, when do I plant this? When is it safe to put this in the ground? When can I sow this? And there's no set answer because it completely depends on your local climate. So there are some ground rules about when it is safe to bring things outdoors. And then you have to go away and actually do a bit of thinking and a little bit of legwork, which is annoying. <laughs> you know, I, I just want the answer. I just give me the answer. Um, but no, you have to go away and look at what your temperatures and what your conditions are. And mine on the south coast. I thought meant that I was lucky enough to be able to bring my peppers up, which you can see behind me. But unfortunately, as soon as I made the decision to bring these to the greenhouse, I made that decision yesterday and the forecast was brilliant. We had like nice overcast weather for kind of two weeks, which is perfect for something like this because it means warm nights, not too much sun scorch. They can kind of get hardened off, get a bit acclimatized no extreme weather and literally i brought them out this morning and the forecast has changed we've got polar winds pushing south and we've gone from estimated lows of around eight degrees to estimated lows of three degrees <laughs> which is definitely too low and the question when is it safe to bring your plants out obviously depends on your low temperatures you can i will link in the description below there's a really useful last frost date map um, that kind of shows where your estimated last frost dates are and the frost date is important for a lot of crops most things will not be frost hardy but then you have to think about whether or not they're cold hardy so chili peppers are not cold hardy you know so they can survive frosts and they can survive cold temperatures, but under around 10 degrees, they will stall. Basically, the kind of enzymes and all of the plant chemistry is geared towards warmer temperatures. So keeping them inside is fine and keeping them above around 10 degrees is quite important. If they go below, then it's not just that they'll stop growing for that time period where the temperature is low, it will have a knock-on effect, it will have a lag effect, it will slow them down for maybe a week, maybe two weeks, sometimes maybe three weeks if it gets really cold, you know, it can really stall your plants. And the same is true of a lot of other tender crops. So things like tomatoes, cucumbers, courgettes, squashes, things like that, and then you have some which are ultra, ultra fussy, like melons, um, you know, they do not go out until there is absolutely no risk of cold temperatures, for me, anyway. When I started thinking about making this video, I was thinking that generally I would go like, oh no, I've made a massive mistake, you know, ah, oh, what have I done? But actually, I don't think I have made a mistake. The mistake would be if I looked at the forecast and went, you know what, I trust these plants, I'm going to just leave them out um, we're gonna chance it. That, I think, would be the mistake. If you wanna do that, there is nothing wrong with doing that. And in fact, I did as, I generally always, uh, for most of my seasons, I will bring a few peppers up a bit early in the season, just to, um, <laughs> just to show myself uh, the effect. Because I think it's quite easy to sometimes just be a bit overly optimistic. And there's some chili peppers in here. These are bueno malata and some raw it. There's a cashmere at the back. Some of my healthier peppers I brought up a little while ago. And I think these have been in here for maybe a week or two. We've had some cold temperatures around kind of five degrees. You can see as well, I've put them in another cover, which I do cover up. And there's some cucumbers and other tender things in here. There's a tomato hidden at the back. Look at this! Honey plus cucumber. It looks really anemic, but they are meant to look like that. It's the honey plus. So that's nice, but these chili peppers have pretty much not grown. And like I say, I do this every season just to remind myself that <laughs> they will survive, but they won't necessarily thrive. And so if you're looking at a two-week forecast of really nice temperatures of around 10 degrees lows in the night, you know that your greenhouse or your polytunnel is gonna warm up, they're undercover, it's probably safe to put your plants out, but you can't make the mistake of being complacent. You have to keep your eye on those forecasts. And as well, it's a really good idea 
to invest in a thermometer, uh, a min-max thermometer, and do that kind of earlier in the season and check what are the lows like in your kind of growing area and how do they correspond to the projected forecast? You know, how accurate do you find those forecasts? I have found that both of my greenhouses, because I have two, uh, <laughs> both of my greenhouses, they get to basically the same temperature as outside. So there is some protection from the elements and wind chill and that kind of thing. But generally, I do trust the temperature I see on the forecast is around the temperature that the plants are going to be experiencing. My forecast, currently we've got seven degrees tonight, six degrees tomorrow, five degrees the day after that. I do not trust these peppers. They are really, they've not been hardened off at all, okay? So I think of these as really quite delicate at the moment. They've spent pretty much their entire life indoors, under a grow light. They've had a bit of a fan blowing on them, but they've not experienced, you know, the full, the full exposure of the sun. They've not experienced proper wind kind of blowing even through a greenhouse. That kind of cold wind that you get is very different from just outside. And so They've also had a really consistent temperature. One of the reasons I did want to bring them up is they're quite cold in my office. So although I'm really, really happy with some of the plants, this one in particular is gorgeous, uh, they could be doing much better if they did have the full heat of the sun and you know a nice warm greenhouse rather than just a grow light. So that's why I've been quite eager to get them out. I get a bit antsy having lots indoors as well. We've also got some fungus gnat issues, which are just a bit frustrating and you don't really want them in the house. My other half is like, get them out. I want them gone. So, you know, there's, it's all about balancing these things. And I can see some of them actually, you know, they're showing the effects of just being out in the sun for one day. So this is a Trinity pepper. It does feel quite light, so it probably just needs a bit of water as well, but you can see it's wilting. And so I'm kind of hardening them off, you know, I'm getting them used to coming out. And so was this a mistake? No, <laughs> it wasn't a mistake. It was a learning experience. That's what I'm telling myself. And if you do the same, you know, if you, if you, if you get a bit excited and want to bring some tender plants out to your greenhouse or your polytunnel, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's good to harden them off in that way. But another thing I would recommend is don't put them in pot sizes that are too big to take them home. So that is something else I've done. A lot of these are still in tiny, tiny little pots. Um, this one in particular, my Kang Style Lemon Starburst. This one just did not want to grow. Uh, it stayed as just cotyledons for weeks and weeks. I was never sure why but I, I didn't give up on it. And just recently, it's really sprung back to life. So quite a few of them are still in really small pots, and it means I can fit all of this in my car, which is where I'm gonna be taking it back home today. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame, because I do, generally, I like to bring them out and just leave them, but you have to be adaptive, you have to be reactive, and just not complacent. I am quite a strong proponent of hardening off tender plants. It's kind of debated. It's kind of, some people say it's really not necessary. I think with something that's been kept indoors for a really long time, that you've been growing indoors, I always think that actually hardening them off is a really good idea. And what is hardening off? It's just, it's basically getting them used to their new environment, whatever that environment might be, if they're going straight out in the ground, or if they're going to live in a polytunnel or a greenhouse. If they're going from one condition to another, I think it's a good idea to give them a bit of time to adjust. There's a few ways you can do it. Either, you know, I, if you get really lucky, you get a period of weather where you get a nice mix of a little bit of sunshine, mostly overcast. And if you're bringing something indoors into a covered situation, that is just a godsend because it will naturally harden off the plants. If you're going from indoors to, you know, blazing sunshine in a greenhouse, that is a very, very dramatic change of environment and it will really knock a lot of your plants. They'll have to spend a lot of energy getting used to that, building up some of their defenses on the leaves. They might get things like sun scorch and that kind of thing. Whereas if you do it gradually, maybe you bring them out for a day, then you take them home or you put them out in the garden for a few hours and then the next day you do it for a few hours longer and the next day a few hours longer and then you can start leaving them out for a few days at a time, maybe overnight if it's warm enough. 
that is the hardening off process basically and I always think that it's a good idea to do that. It certainly can't do any harm. I haven't done very many videos on just my chili peppers this season and let me know if you're interested in seeing some proper updates and just me spending some time waxing lyrical and showing you all of these. All that's left for me to do is to say thank you ever so much for watching. I was actually going to do a plot tour today but it was chucking it down when I arrived so I thought I would just do this short little video instead. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper tier patrons. You are wonderful. Bill, Louise, Tony, Michael and Pam. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you again next time.